Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to another React video. On, oh, I'm doing great. Thanks for being here. Isn't it great to be here? It is great, because guess what? I'm doing great. I'm fired up. I hope you're doing great. I hope you're fired up as well. Uh, listen, we're going to get right into this, because this is going to be one of the longest React videos um, that we're probably going to do, uh, because guess what? Yours truly is in the video. I'm reacting to myself. It's almost like Inception. It's going to be fun. It's going to be good. Um, no ad reads, no sponsors for today. Uh, so let's get into it, but some backstory. So a couple months ago, Gina actually told me that I think she was going to be cast for this Jubilee series called uh, Middle Ground. And if you don't know, uh, Jubilee is a YouTube channel. It's, I guess you can call it a network because they have a bunch of different shows within the channel. It's not really a network. It's a channel just with different shows. Um, and one of their shows is called Middle Ground where they'll get two groups of people and try to find some middle ground without yelling at each other or <laughs> debating back and forth forever. But you know how these shows work out. They, they never work out the way that they want. So uh, they'll get, you know, like flat earthers versus earth scientists, or they'll get, you know, Mormons versus Muslims, or they'll get black conservatives versus black liberals. And, you know, they'll, they'll ask a bunch of prompts uh, and then people who agree with the prompt step forward and discuss why. And then the disagreeers are brought forward and they talk about why they disagree. And then the two then have a conversation, try to find some, you know, make believe middle ground that is never going to happen. But anyway, I digress. Gina had mentioned that she was cast for one of these and that she was going to do, I think the, uh, the feminists versus non-feminists or something like that. And obviously she would have been great. And she told me, Oh, I don't, I don't even, I, I don't even, whoa, she, sorry. I jumped the gun, but, uh, she told me that she was going to get, um, cast for that one in particular and that I should maybe offer my name or that she was going to tell somebody about me. I can't remember what it was. So I put my name down and the original one that I wanted was they had, they were going to have a male feminist versus uh, male anti-feminist. And I would be representing the anti-feminist side, which would have been awesome. Uh, but I didn't get picked for that one. They offered me the uh, queer conservatives, sorry, the queer parents versus teens versus conservative parents, which I would be representing the uh, conservative side. So I said, okay. And, um, you know, I flew out to LA. I did this. Uh, Gina, unfortunately, wasn't able to make her appearance. So she didn't end up uh, going out to LA and doing the Jubilee show. But uh, I did. And it was kind of crazy. And let me give you guys some, some uh, you know, some, some personal, uh, I guess, hmm, let me give you guys some sort of insider information about even before the episode started. So we get there, uh, not we, I get there, and there are a bunch of people that are already there. And uh, they asked us, you know, not to be really talking to each other because they wanted to save that for when we met each other on screen or on stage for the first time. So uh, it, w it was kind of awkward. We just weren't really talking to each other other than where are you from? Oh, I'm from here, I'm from here. And then Aldo Badazari walked in. And if you know Aldo, he's a contributor for PragerU and he does a lot of really, really, really good reporting on, um, let's say, uh, sexual indoctrination of children uh, in the LGBTQ realm of the world, especially in education. And he does a lot of reporting about uh, porn addiction. So I was pleased to see him. And I was like, what are you doing here? I know you're not a parent. He says, well, I'm one of the teens. I was like, well, you're a teenager, whatever. Um, so uh, so that that was nice. It was actually nice knowing somebody there. Uh, we had been on an episode of Slightly Offensive with each other, not in the same room, but uh, he was, I think he was uh, in Texas and, you know, we did our show from Nashville. Um, but yeah, that was it. Uh, we get mic'd up, go in there. You kind of meet, hello, say hello to everybody. There are about four or five cameras uh, for all different sorts of coverage. We, we all get mics and uh, we don't know the questions going into it. So uh yeah, why don't why don't we just get into it? And I can tell you places that they edited stuff out. I can I can tell you things that that I said that didn't get shown on here. Um, yeah, so let's just let's just go right into it. Let's watch this. I don't even know what queer means because you have a different definition. I'm sure you have one. And I'm sure you have one, and I'm sure you have one. 2022, baby, you better look up what queer means. It's, it's off the Jews, off the. So you guys. Off the line. Line. Spoiler alert: uh, No one actually ended up giving me a definition of what queer meant to them, or him or her. No one gave me a clear definition of what queer meant him. So, surprise. Middle ground. 
queer parents versus conservative parents versus kids. And now it says teens over here, which is kind of weird. They, they, they weren't kids. These people, these, these people were, were, you know, at least late teenagers to early 20 year olds. Let's be realistic here. Here comes the first prompt. Step forward if you agree with the prompt. It is important that parents honor their children's boundaries. It's already off the bat. It, a question like that is kind of worded a little weird. It's, you know, do, do is it important that parents honor their children's boundaries? Be specific. How old are their children? Are they toddlers? Are they in the fifth grade? Are they teenagers? And what do you mean by boundaries? It's it's very broad and it's kind of it's it it they they don't really specify these questions. They just kind of make a broad blanket statement or they ask this broad question and they I mean I guess that's why you know people can hang back or step forward. But um I don't want to spend too much time talking uh, or at least showing you guys because if we did we'd be here for over two an hour. So I kind of want to. There are going to be edits where I just kind of skip ahead and get to really important parts. I like the phrase boundaries breed intimacy. Um, if you don't have that respect, mutual respect for one another, how can I be open with you as a child? There's that lack of trust if you're not respecting boundaries. It's just such, it's something that we that we heard all the time. It's like these these rainbows and butterflies and sort of all these weird sort of which I get from the kids' point of view because they're not parents. And at the end of the day, I'm not going to be my kid's best friend. So if they're talking about boundaries like that, like I. Of course, I respect my two-year-old, or of course, I respect my child. But I mean, I, I I I don't do things in order to gain respect for them. I'm the parent. I set the rules. I set the boundaries. You understand? It's also important because each kid is different, and I have a brother, and boundaries that work for me don't work for him. And so my parents parent both of us according to what. Spoiler alert: this this girl kind of sucks. We need, and that involves having different boundaries. So and. Yeah. Like to honor your child's boundaries does not mean at your boundaries. There's Raw. a deficit at my boundaries. Like my kid is not going to be cussing me out, telling me what he's not going to do. It's none of that. I can I can respect my child, and I have a 14 year old son, and he respects me. I've never had any issues with rebellion or I guess disrespect in that way. Because also, I want to interject here because we're going to hear a lot of this. I never had any issues, or me, or this. We all were speaking subjectively. There's a reason why they didn't bring on child psychologists, child developmental doctors, social workers. There's a reason why they didn't do this because those people can speak with data and studies and all the different type of information. Whereas we all who are sitting down with each other, we're speaking anecdotally. We were speaking subjectively about our own experiences and the way that we parent our children or the way that our parents parent us. So you'll see why this is important. We communicate about everything now. And, you know, there is a line, of course, that you don't want to cross, you know, especially when it comes to the safety of the child. It is 100%. Why do they always speak like that with this weird sort of upward inflection? Like they're always asking questions. Why do they always do that? It's so annoying, but let's skip ahead here till, you know, when 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 the real when the real stuff when the real stuff happens. Can the disagreer step forward? Hey, look, that's me. It's me. I'm wearing my t-shirt tucked in. I look pretty good. I would like it if the prompt was worded almost a little bit differently because it, it puts importance on my kids' boundaries, where I think as a parent, we set those boundaries. But I like what you said, where you said that just because uh, boundaries are set doesn't give, you know, your child the ability or the reason to cuss you out because it's like, oh, well, I've set these boundaries up and that's my boundary. It seems like people are... See, I'm being charitable. I'm being nice. Their guard is probably, you know, lowered a little bit. Like, wow, this conservative guy is, he seems, he seems somewhat reasonable and, you know, pretty unbased. Let's see where it goes. Equating boundaries with emotions, and mm. I would not do that. Carmen was cool. I would say that their emotions are different from their the boundaries that we as parents should be setting for them. Because I don't know about you, but when I was a child, I broke every boundary that my parents set for me. And they were there for specific reasons, to keep me safe. So if we just allow our children to have no boundaries or we allow them to set the standard for the boundaries, I think that they're just not. Okay, boring, 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 boring. Let's 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 get to the let's get to the next question because this just goes back and forth and for a while. Here comes safe. here comes the the real good one, okay? This is this is where it starts to kind of get out of hand. For a child to have a mother and a father. It's best for a child to have a mother and a father. 
It, it should be obvious. There should be no debate about this. But guess what? Aldo stepping forward, based. Me stepping forward, so based. I'm going to set this one down. The raw queer comes, so unbased. I, that one first. I, hey. like that. I did. Oh, it's okay. He was, uh, I took some pictures. He was really disappointed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Adriano. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's Adriano. Uh, okay, where was I? Okay, sorry. Let's get back. Well, let's get back into it. Yeah. I had to think about that for a second. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it's kind of obvious, right? For for a plethora of reasons, but I think that the, the ordered way is, you know, a mother and a father for for two different people that have two different and distinct purposes. Uh, we all know mothers are just inherently better at nurturing. They they provide life. They give life. And I think both of those two distinct roles are absolutely important and integral to uh, child development, I think. What did you hear me say? You heard me say that's why both have unique roles and are integral, right? Both. They cut out what I said about fathers. What I said about fathers was I said how mothers are are inherently more nurturing. They're, they, they foster life. They give life. Um, and fathers, what I said about fathers was, and I remember this specifically because I, I took it from uh, Timothy Gordon's book um, uh, about the patriarchy, where I, I forget the the name of the book, where but it's something along the lines of like bring back the patriarchy or something or understanding the patriarchy. But he says that the role of the father is there are three Ps to provide, protect, and preach. The father should be the protector of the family. The father should be the provider of the family, and the the father should fulfill the role as the preacher to the family. So from God to the father of the family, then to the family, like. It's it, it, it's biblical. The father is the head of the family, right? The man is the the you know the 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 head of the church, I guess to say. I, I I'm, I'm I know I'm you know horrible at this, but you know what I'm saying that the man is the head of the church, and the 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 woman, the mother, should look to the head of the family as the head of the church. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It makes sense when it's said properly and not necessarily by me. But they cut that out, and I want to know why they cut that out. Obviously, we were there for between three and four hours, and this video is one of the longest that they've ever released in the Middle Ground series. It's almost an hour and a half. But I, I understand why they have to cut stuff out, but when you leave out context, it's very confusing, especially when people in the comments are just spouting nonsense and not realizing that there was a context that things were set in. Um, but yeah, that, that's what I said. I said, having a mother and a father in a home is, you know, the most beneficial situation a child can have. I, I don't see how that's even like based, like that's just basic knowledge. Yeah, I can speak to my own experience. I had uh, two parents in the home, uh, very loving, um, and it was really vital to have a masculine figure and also a feminine figure. Right. I think if you have too much of either, that can affect you in negative ways um, as a kid. The, the problem that I have with the they're, they're seething is that when you have a same-sex couple that has a child, they're necessarily depriving that child of a mother and a father, and they're excluding a parent in one of those important roles. They're not even necessarily doing that. They're not even necessarily depriving uh, the child of a mother or a father. They're they're just actively doing it. The intentional. They they want to say, well, it's not intentional. This is just our situation. We love it. No, no, no. That's what they're doing. From the child, and we we have a lot of data on this. Social scientists have tons of studies and research about this of decades that non-biological parents are more transitory than biological parents, um, that when a child loses a, a parent, that there's a lot of trauma involved. Um, and so I think it's important to realize that sexes are different and children need models for both of those things. And it isn't- I wanna bring up based Alice, because Alice is pretty based here. Young Asian who's bad at math. Masculinity and the femininity. The thing is, you can only display so much masculinity and femininity. The thing is, like, it doesn't matter if you're a biological woman and you're trying to exert as much masculinity as possible. At the end of the day, a child's going to grow up in a same-sex household and they're going to go to school and then see that other parents have a father figure, a mother figure, and they're going to grow up and start... And just all this stuff about same-sex couples, like gender, all this stuff's going to come to them at a very young age. They're one-dimensional. They're not going to take it in the same way that we do. So I just feel like at, from a very young age, it would confuse the kid. I was oh, based Alice. I just want I want to hug her. She's I want you know she's so based and I I love it and she she goes on about a bunch of other stuffs within this conversation about uh, is it best for a child to have a mother and a father? I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna kind of skip over Austin because Austin's answer is a little bit long winded. 
But uh, let me just see if we can move forward. If you would say, um, you know, emotional embrace, you know, and I think that's important. You can't just get that from one. Said, um, but I do agree about have a male and a female and they reproduce. You know, that's just the, that's the way we're built. That's the way we're built biologically and from God. I don't agree with most of the shit you guys said, um, but I do agree. It's so weird that they bleeped her saying shit out right there, but they left all the other stuff that she said. She said the same word uh, a bunch of other times and they didn't bleep it out. So that was curious as to why they did that. But uh, she doesn't disagree with us, but she does. Let's hear why. About balance, okay? I am a queer mother of a 14-year-old male. And what does that mean? What does that mean? She is a queer, that, that's why I wanted to know. What does that mean? I am a queer mother. Because if you go to her Instagram page, you will see that these are not there anymore. They're, they're not there. She, she had them. Uh, I, I don't know if it was a cancer thing. I wasn't looking, but I saw that and just kind of, you know, connected the dots. So I don't know if it was a cancer thing. I, you know, I hope that it, I, I hope that it wasn't, you know, in both respects. But um, yeah, what, what does that mean? I'm a queer mother of a child. I mean, why don't you just say you're a mother? And I believe that he definitely benefits from a male in his life as well as me in his life. Now, the thing that you guys really aren't touching on is that most queer families are not just the deficit of the opposite sex. There's a lot of extended family. Like, I make sure that my son has lots of male influence because I know like you, like what you're talking about is a thousand percent true, especially in the black community. The destruction of the black household is just a whole different conversation. Yeah, so that's where, why, that's why the difference between a male figure or a male role model is totally different and is superseded by the actual father. But, but she hits the nail on the head. It is, it is why, and something that you can point to as why there is a degradate, degradation of the black communities because of absent fathers and for the lack of those fathers in their children's lives. But because I know that, it is my, it is my responsibility to make sure he's got a strong male influence or a few of them in his Let's life. get now, his dad. If they're not a father, they can be a father figure. I'm adopted. So I don't necessarily agree with everything you said about the biology of family because I believe the only thing that's real in this world is love. And I do believe anybody can love. I mean, love is real, but there are a bunch of other things that are real too. I mean, they're... Yeah, this desk is real, I think. I mean, and fortify a child, a beautiful environment. But I do believe a child does benefit from male and female energy. And that is best of my opinion. Like, imagine that being a controversial opinion. Uh, like, she was the only person from the group of queers. And I'm, that's not a slander. It's just that that's how they labeled them. But imagine that being a controversial opinion. I do believe that a child benefits from having a father. <laughs> like, what? Oh, my God. Give her the Nobel Peace Prize. Now the disagreeers are coming forward. So I disagree, um, clearly. Uh, uh, being a <clears throat> two male household uh, with two uh, little girls, like you were saying, you know, I have a lot of strong women in my life and in my husband's life. And, you know, we, we make sure that they are a part of oh, our lives. Based Alice they are is going part to of our girls' lives. Get they into know it. Them very well, that they feel comfortable with them. And I have even told them at five years old, you know, if you don't feel comfortable ever coming to me about any kind of situation, you have your aunt, you have your grandma, you have these awesome, amazing women in your life who aren't your you mother. Talk to, and you should feel open about it. Do you really think that it's your extended family's job, as like, you mentioned, like strong female figures? Do you think it's their job for them to parent your own kid? Because they're not like, parenting. No. Don't cut dear based Alice off. And it's weird because that's she loves doing that. This girl, Elizabeth, just loves cutting people off. It's just an influence. We were talking yeah. about like extended relatives, but what about immigrant families where all of your extended relatives are in a different country, a different time zone? It doesn't, I, even have, it to doesn't be have to like, be family, though. It yeah. can be like I, family. It can be chosen family. It's just some woman or some man in your life that has a... Just some woman. Just some man. You don't have a dad? Go to the corner. There's some dude over there. He's sitting in his wheelchair. He's asking for money. But go see if he can be an influence into your life. I know, Mike, that's a little bit dramatic, don't you think? Like, you're just kind of, you're not making sense. No, I know, but that's what she's saying. Just some dude, some man, some woman. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Chosen family. They're not related by blood at all. A relationship with that child, and it's not their job to parent, but it's their job to maybe step in and give that, like, I know for me, I have two dads. Step in and be a parent. 
and I have strong female figures in my life. They never parented me, but sure. Yeah, because they're not your parents. Like, it, it, it. I know that they're there if I need them. I mean, you know, when I got my period, I went to my dad's. I didn't want to go Weird. to a woman because they're my parents. Weird. And they made me feel loved. And there was, I had never, ever once wanted a mom, sought a mom, thought I was missing something because I didn't have a mom. And I'm sick and tired of people telling me that She's I am missing tired. something. She is missing something. She is literally missing something. I'll give you a hint. It's, it rhymes with smother. It's mother. She is literally missing a mother. And what's convenient for this person right now in this conversation is that she doesn't until later, probably like an hour later, somewhere in the discussion, that she says she was a surrogate baby and that her father's rented out the womb of some woman and she was, you know, like a, you know, sur uh, she was a surrogate child. Uh, her father's wanted wanted a kid, so the only way that they can do that because two two guys can't produce a child because it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't work that way. So you have to rent out the womb of a woman. That's how she came to be, and she doesn't say that. So it's convenient that she leaves that little part out. And so what we wanted to do is. Uh, you're definitely missing something. And in the comments, people are just kind of going off. How can you say that she's missing something when she say that she's never missing something? She's missing something because she's never had it because she is literally missing something. Because I'm just well, not. It's because you didn't have it. Um, yeah, but do you feel like you're missing something or you're not missing having two dads because you didn't have it? I had a father in the home. I don't need two dads because I had a father. Like what these people like I, I, it's just false equivalencies. It's horrible comparisons. It doesn't make any sort of sense. Like, do you miss, do you miss having a father? Cause 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 you had two a mother. Like, no, I had a mother and a father. Now, if I had two moms, let's say if I had two lesbian mothers, of course I'd be missing a father. I didn't have one. Of course I'd be missing it. And I would understand if anyone was like, well, you're missing a father. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Thank you, thank you. I've been waiting for someone to acknowledge that. Well, no, no, that, no, that's not what we're talking about because okay. what, what happened, no, 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 because okay. what happens is. You're missing out then. What, because they don't have two dads? <laughs> I hear like, yes, ma'am. No, no, no. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. We'll talk about this one in a little bit because the, like the poster child for, you know, whatever, white trash. But I'm just saying, like, it, 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 it was so like infuriating, but I didn't want to come across as the curmudgeon conservative person who, you know, even though I don't have to do that in order to get labeled that, but it was just ridiculous. Like I held back so much. I held back so much. Thanks be to God, but I did it. Hold on, hold on, because <laughs> we all know, you know this and I know this. There is. I was pointing to Austin, who is the uh, very, very tall uh, black conservative father who, it, it, to be fair, the dude was like six, eight. So when he's standing next to me, it's like this. Okay. But, um, I was pointing to him and I was saying, we know this. There's this bond that a mother and child have that nobody can replace. I don't care if it's another dad. Based. I don't care if it's aunt. I don't Based. care if it's a grandmother. Based. And, and it's true. And it's true. Wrong. That, there was a study on, done on showing that the fathers about, formed the same studies. biological studies connection. Mean to me. Studies mean nothing to me. I want to so based, studies mean nothing to me because we're having a subjective conversation using anecdotal evidence about why we parent our kids the way we do and why we feel the way we do about our parents. Don't come to me and talk about some study. I'm sorry, it doesn't make any sense to do that. It's a sidestep, it's misdirection, it's you trying to win an argument when we're not having a debate. I want to know why you don't think you're missing something. And also, all the people in the comments were like, Mike doesn't care about studies. Conservatives don't care about studies. Yeah, you wanna know why? It's because I have an IQ over 110. That's why I don't care about studies. It's the freaking bell curve. I'm over here, they're over here, and it's always like, my studies, my studies. You know, you've seen this meme, right, where you see the person drooling, and then you see like the guy with the glasses, then you see the Jedi dude with the hat. I don't care about studies. That's me, I'm the Jedi dude. I don't care about studies. Also, what am I supposed to do? Hold on, what study was that? This is what they would have liked. This is what they would have liked me to do. What study was that about how uh, dads are able to form bonds with their kids? Like, mother okay, what is it called? Who is it by? Okay, hold on. Like doing, doing all this. Like doing, doing type. The producer's yelling at me, Mike, Mike, Mike. And I'm hold, hold on, hold on one second. I really do have to read the study that she just brought up. I understand that we're having an organic conversation, but uh, oh, this is a 54 page white paper. Give me three and a half hours to analyze the study. Three hours later. Okay, I'm done reading the study. Uh, I'm going to do some research now to find a study that I can manipulate now and use to prove my point and kind of own you. 
three hours later. So I have this study. Like, what do they expect? These, these people are so dumb. Like, the, don't read. Do not read the comments section of this video or really any Jubilee video. Don't do it. Do yourself a favor. Know that Uncle Mike did it for you and has been in there fighting hard. Um, but don't do it. And that's the point that I relate to so many of these people. We're having a conversation. We're not necessarily having a debate. You said you are not missing anything by not having a mother. I'm saying you literally are because you do not have a mother and you literally are missing a bond that only a mother and daughter would have. So don't throw some study. That's that's the weirdest thing. And I know like people who react to this video will have like a field day with it. Like, oh, he doesn't care about studies. Like everything he says is like, now it doesn't matter. But I've had so many people reach out to me and say, why would she bring up a study? It makes absolutely no sense. So let's go back to this video just because uh, let, let, you just got to hear the rest of this. Hear him it's, out. It's, I want to hear this reality. guy out right here. Listen. Oh, so she interrupted me. Okay. I want to say that. I didn't, I didn't interrupt anyone. She interrupted me and uh, Raw over here, the queer mom, had my back. She wanted to hear what I had to say. What are you saying? You're saying that I've never cared about having a mom. It never bothered me. I have two dads. They're great. You're saying that because you don't have your mother, which kills me. That kills me to think that. Genuine. Sorry, I knew her. You. <laughs> It's just imagine the most unlikable person and then imagine that person sitting three people away from you. And while you're trying to figure out that person, while you're asking genuine questions to that person, they just scoff and get all sarcastic with you. Doesn't kill me. That is what, wild. What, what if, her, mo what if what, her mom, what if her biological mom, let's just say her biological sure. mom. Was let's, I can't wait to hear this hypothetical. A drug addict, a prostitute, like my biological right. mom, that did not hold me the that's, first three months. I'm not that's, missing that's her, hon. That's a I'm horrible not missing reality. Her. We're not talking about best case scenario. We're talking it's a hypothetical that doesn't mean anything. Like, I'm sorry that happened to you, but I'm, I'm literally asking her. I want to know why this girl feels like she's not missing anything. And all that she did was throw out a study. She's She never answers the question. And that was the most contentious point of this whole freaking episode was that, that, that apparently conservatives don't care about stats and that I'm really mean and that I made her cry. About I mean, but this is a scenario. real life scenario. This is a real life scenario. I don't, I don't, I don't miss that comfort. But, but you her. don't know that because it, because you don't but know you her. You don't know that because you're not me. Exactly. So but you what I'm, speak what I'm, for other queer what folk I'm, and tell them what, what they're missing. First, imagine me speaking for other queer folk. All I said was, you are, you literally are missing a mother. That's, that's. You said you are not missing one. I'm saying you literally are missing one by definition. You are a surrogate child. Your mother. You you were literally ripped away from your mother. Okay, your your mother has has no connection to you whatsoever because this girl's two dads robbed her of that. So she's literally missing. I'm not speaking for her. That doesn't make any sense. But here's where I try to get the definition of queer. First of all, first of all, I don't I don't even I don't missing. even know what queer means because you have a different definition. I'm sure you have a different different definition. I'm sure you have one. I'm sure you have base, one. Base, base, sure base, base. 2022, baby. You better look up what queer means. It's, it's often used. Off, so you guys, off so hold on. Now. You guys have the exact same <laughs> like, definition no, of what just, a queer no, no, person. No, 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 no. We don't have that. No, no, no. From, from academia. Okay. Okay. No, I don't. I don't think any part of the conversation really bothered me so much. I think the the one thing that I wish I could have nailed down. This guy's a bigot. A clear definition of of what being queer is. I understand that. I never found out. Each person, and I actually said it, each person probably has his or her own definition. You know, the same way if they asked us what a conservative was, we probably would have had a definition for it. But I just wish that, you know, that definition would have helped me frame maybe some of my questions a little bit better that I had. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking about you guys right uh, here. But you guys. We're you guys. Oh, no. We're all the same here, honey. No. No, we're not. No, we're all we're all human beings. No, with equality blood is a false god. We're all equality the same is a false people, god. Honey. We are not all the same. He's black. I'm I'm mixed. Ooh. White, wow. white. We are not the same. What, oh my god. Racist. What, whatever you characterize me is a racist. Latino, black, young, hairy, Indian, Asian, like all this kind of stuff. Like I get, we're all the same. We're not all the same. This this chick has two dads. I don't have two dads. I, I'm now supposed to be the same as her. So stupid very small bit of me because you don't know me i can't judge exactly you so i wouldn't you. assume to say well, that i'm not, that mean you were the same being. i don't know her which is why i wouldn't assume to say that we're the same seems pretty reasonable seems based
Teams? Where I mean, are, even, where inequality are you in teams? is what actually makes everything good. I mean, we Based. were just talking about how, you know, there that somebody in your life, like an aunt, is filling the role of the mother. I didn't are say you filling the role. But you said, you said some woman. A mother is not I some not woman. A mother is, is a mother. Right. And no matter who you are. I have some woman who I can go to if I need them. And they're and a role not I have some woman I can go to if I need them. Your grammar is awful. I have some woman I can go to if I need her. If you would have said, I have women in my life, I can go to them if I need them. If you can't talk right. Missing out on a mother because she doesn't have one. And nobody should be able to tell her that. Of course she has a mother. She just doesn't have a relationship. I didn't. She, we didn't know this. We didn't know that she was a surrogate baby when I said this. So I said, of course she has a mother because every person who has ever existed on planet Earth came from a mother. Of course she has a mother. She just has no relationship with her, which is what I said. Had I known that she came from a surrogate pregnancy, of my outlook would have been totally different. Because I would have hammered that point home. Listen, you were robbed. You were robbed from your mother. You should be. You should be kind of angry at your dads. Didn't have my father. My whole. Okay, let, let's let's get know, past this. From the age of twenty-two until now. Therefore, so good. therefore, in a same-sex house, the order of the. I have a stop! 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 Wild. Real quick, we need to move on in just a moment. We haven't heard from Brittany or Alexa. I think it's really important to realize that it takes a village. It takes a village to raise children. So with yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, to a certain extent, sure, it takes a village. I like to use the word maybe community a little bit more, but especially, you know, the word I like, I like family. It takes a family to raise children. OK, it could be nuclear, it could be extended, it could be all of these other things. But what you're not going to do is you're not going to take away a mother and a, or a father from a child intentionally, intentionally, and then replace that person with some woman or some guy, which is what these people keep on saying. Elizabeth coming from a two-parent household, which was a big topic for the agreeers here. A two no. No, it was not. It was not a two-parent household. It was a mother and a father. Look right here. Look. Look where my little mouse gets bigger, right? Not two-parent. Mother and father. Mother and father. Parent household? I don't think she's missing on anything. I raise my children with my wife. She's literally missing. She's literally missing a mother. And then this one is saying... I raise my two kids with my wife. Those kids are missing their father. And I would say to her, those kids are missing their dads. How can you tell me what they're missing? You don't know me. They're, they're, they're quite literally missing their father. My daughter knows no different. You know, she is not missing. Anything. She will. Neither is my son. Do you think one day they will? Absolutely not. I, I with absolute certainty, I can say that my kids will absolutely not miss the fact that they didn't have a father growing up. Cope. And see that makes no sense. I have a question. I have a question. I don't know how to ask this question. Was it like uh, with does it? it let, let's get into whatever. Yes, let's go. Okay. Oh wait, let's hear this. Out. And you're saying that there are all these. I think that's what you, causes though. the pro well, If you're well, having a well, kid for well, a political well, agenda, no, no, you should no, no, not no, be no, a parent. No, 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 I wonder no, why no, white no, folks no, adopt no, black kids no, all the time. You always no, see no, white no, families no, adopt no, black children from Africa, and I'm like, why can't you adopt, you know, a little white kid? When you. I mean, I'm the racist, but, you know, whatever. Look at television. When you look at reality TV, I feel, just from what I'm seeing, I don't go off of statistics and data. That's a bunch of BS. I go off of what I see. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. For Austin, that was a little kind of misstep on Austin, and I think that a lot of the people got the comments about, I don't go off statistics and data. I think they were attributing that to me when he actually said that. Um, you really shouldn't preface that with saying that you should go off what you see and then include reality TV and social media off of that. Like That's that's kind of probably not the best way to uh, uh, approach any argument. Um, but yeah, I was talking about my problem with stats, data, studies had to do specifically with a subjective conversation that people are having with each other where all that they're doing is using personal anecdotes to explain their position. That's where I don't care about stats. Like, let's leave stats out of this. Let's have a, let's have a conversation here and talk about why we feel the way that we do. If, if, if this was a formal debate and this, is it best for a child to have a mother and a father? Was uh, was the was the was the question posed for the formal debate, and I represented the side that held the affirmative, yes, it is, and then someone else represented the side that said, no, 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 a mother and a father is not really necessary. What we would do is we would go back and forth, we would have opening statements, we would quote studies, we would quote data, we would quote statistics, we would quote social scientists, and, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until the people in the audience would figure out who won the debate. That was not what this was intended to be. This was just intended to be a conversation between, let's say, lay people.
not academics, not scientists. And it just, it, it doesn't, doesn't compute for these people. It just doesn't compute that they can't understand that people don't need to bring up studies in order to try and prove a point, which studies can be manipulated to prove one's point. We already know that. <laughs> when Homeboy has said that he doesn't believe in data or statistics, I don't think it was a subtle eye roll. I definitely got whiplash. How else do you make a point that is professional and mature if you're not citing data and you're professional and mature? What 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 profession? What do you do? You're you're Gen Z. You're probably a student. What profession are you? I'm a I'm a I'm a photographer and podcaster. What what sort of <laughs> what credit? What what sort of background do I have where I should be making like in in a in a subjective conversation should I be bringing up stats? It's such a cope. I can't even do it. It's such, it's such a cope. Don't ever bring up studies to me when we're having a conversation. Imme I'll immediately shut you down. I don't care how you want to say that I come off or how how I look or appear. But uh, no, it, they, they 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 just so so you're stupid. You're not citing research. And you're calling it all bullshit. That scrapped all of his credibility. Because it is. You're talking about kids of gay parents and you're saying that they're all these things. And I, the person you're talking about, I'm sitting here telling you you're wrong. How can we be wrong? How can we be wrong? You're, you're saying you've never wanted a mother. You've never sought out a mother. All we're saying is we're, you're literally missing a mother. That's why you feel the way. Because you, you, you don't have one. So we want to know, do you think it's a possibility that at some point in your life, you may feel like you would missed out on having a mother? It's a genuine question. It, we're not making truth claims. She's making truth claims and saying, oh, I would never, I would never think that way. I would never feel that way. Like, uh, I don't know, based on personal experience, there, I don't need data, but based on personal experience, you probably will. You probably will. And you're still interrupting me and you're still in Yeah, no one interrupted her. No one, no one interrupted her. She was interrupting everybody. I don't know what video she was watching. I don't know what conversation she was a part of, but uh, no one interrupted her. She was doing all the interrupting. And I'd be adamant about that point. She was doing it. Validating me and you're still telling me that your opinion must be right, even though you're not in my shoes. Did anyone, did any one of us say that our opinion must be right? I even said in the video, I'm asking you these questions because I'm genuinely curious and I don't know you. Why would I say that I'm right? I know I'm right, but why would I say that? That was really shocking. Also, can I just say I'm having fun? I hope if you're still watching up to this point, <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun here. I feel like you guys are in the room with me. This is great. What, a, what, what, what an event. Yeah, I wanted to respond to some earlier points. We've been talking a lot about what is natural, what is order. So Alexa is a trans girl, formerly a boy, still a boy, but she was, she, he's, a, he's a girl. Um, I'd like to say that there are many, many studies of over 1,500 <sighs> non-human species of animals that have, they parent in their species children that are not biologically theirs. Uh, are we a bunch of fucking baboons having a conversation here? Are we a bunch of marmosets? Are we penguins? Are we cuttlefish? No, we're not. We are humans talking about humans. This is the point. They try to bring up these stats to make them look smarter. What's the point of saying that? I also don't think that reproduction is the end-all be-all of what a family is to be. Um, you're allowed to have your own biblical beliefs. I totally understand that and respect oh, well, that. Thanks. Um, Thank you. What you're talking about with sustainability, I'm not suddenly going to tell all the straight people to suddenly partner up with people of the same sex and no longer reproduce. It's a minority of people that are queer that do want to have children. And I just think that they should be allowed to have children. And I don't think that they are depriving the children of anything. Um, Subjective. The foundation of what a family should be is to provide a child with love and support. and From a mother and a father. And raise them into respectable, upstanding citizens. Agreed. I think it's important to have masculine energy, to have feminine energy, to have... Any what's with all this energy? What's with what's with all this energy stuff? What's with I I listen? I know women who have dude energy. Okay, all right. I don't. I don't. I I I can I can say from a personal point of view, if my mom acted like a dude all the time, I'd be very confused, and I probably wouldn't like that. What's with all this energy stuff? No, you have a father because he's a man. You have a woman because she's. You have a mother because she's a woman, and the two are very different. Okay. It's, it's, it's all this energy. It's all this energy stuff. It's very weird. They're like wizards and all this energy. Like they're like Dragon Ball Z or like the last airbenders with all the energies. Other energy that there is. 
I just don't think that that is necessarily the job. Also, can I say, let's look at my shirt right here, okay? The future is family. I'm going to put a link to that in the description because that is from our dear friend Saint Wave. And I said, Saint Wave, I said, listen, I'm going on to the show where I'm representing a conservative and it's about family. I noticed that you have a shirt on there called The Future is Family. I bought it, okay? I didn't ask for it for free. What I did ask for was that he shipped it a little bit quicker so that I had it in time. And it arrived to my house the day before I got on a plane. So thank you, Saint Wave, for the shirt. Go out and get it. No code. I don't have a code. No discount code. Sorry. But uh, just listen, support Saint Wave. He does such a great job. We're coming out with a future collab in the future. Let's get back into it. How long have we been recording? 40 minutes. Okay, let's see if we can make this video as long as the Jubilee video. Let's see. You incorporate these gender roles into it. Are we, um, are, are we able to qualify note, something before on the next note, one? On May I respond nope, to Elizabeth? Nope, nope. This was another thing. This was another thing that the producers did. They didn't allow us to really have any closure when it came to the questions, which I guess I understand to a point because they were on a time constraint. I guess they only had us for four or five hours so they, we, they, they, they couldn't just, you know, let us talk ad nauseum and go on in circles and circles. But with this specific prompt, I wanted to qualify why Elizabeth felt the way that she did, and we never found out. They were protecting her in a way. It, it, was, it, was, it was kind of unfair. Not kind of, it was unfair. Reset. Reset, reset, reset. I said, I said I need to know what queer means, and someone said, look it up. <sighs> <laughs> I think we all do. It's necessary for parents to have open dialogue about sex with their children. All right, I'll let you guys think about that for a little bit. It is necessary for parents to talk with their children or have an open dialogue about sex. Like I said, it's vague. It, 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 it is broad. It doesn't tell you what age the kids should be when you maybe start talking. But, but that's what it is. That's why people step forward, and that's why they talk. That's why they talk about it. So here we go. Hell no. I said, hell no. I ain't talking to my kid about no sex. I ain't talking to my daughter about no sex. I do believe it's necessary, but I believe you have to do it at an appropriate age. Yes. So once they're ready, then I think you should have nodding, those conversations. Yeah, nodding, yeah. So that they don't have to go outside the family for that information. I never felt comfortable going to my parents um, at all, or my mom. I never felt comfortable going to her. I would like to- Let's see if we can go to something child, which I have, interesting. Where I hope that no matter what happens in her life, that she feels comfortable. It's his business to say that. No one. Oh yeah, okay, this is where she starts crying. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Enforcing that you have to come to me is so important to I have, where I hope that no matter what happens in her life, that she feels comfortable going to me at least, and then I will help her or together we'll just also also quick tidbit her dad was there her dad was like sitting across from us in and it's and it's lit very dark on purpose they call it a rembrandt lighting but uh, where where the director and where the producer sitting and where all the monitors are and the sound people behind them were chairs so it was shot in this kind of empty warehouse um but there were chairs and he was back there so they they broke us up for a second and like she he kind of consoled her for a little bit but there's like there's editing that happens here determine if she's actually ready for the conversation and hopefully she is i definitely agree with you i think um poor alexa so i mean he was just kind of his point was interrupted so kids feel like they can come to you and not necessarily enforcing that you have I like to how he notices it too like oh, one thing is oops. like when it's much younger are you okay um, oh no i'm just i'm really sorry <sighs> I just haven't been told. That. Do you want to talk about it? Like, I, I wish we could have talked about it. They'll let her cry for as long as she wants. I was raised drunk in a long time. <laughs> this is just a lot of trauma associated with this. And listen, I don't like it when people cry. I don't even like thinking that I'm the reason that people are crying. But it's just, we, no one said that you were raised wrong. None of us actually said that. I mean, there are people out there in the world that probably do say it, but all we wanted to know is why you felt the need to say that you never ever would feel like you are missing a mother. Like that's all we wanted to know. Um, and it's not drama for my family. It's drama for people telling me it's wrong. I know my family is right and I know my family is normal. <laughs> I didn't know it. I didn't know my family was not normal until other people decided to tell me that. And that was nobody else's. I mean, kids wouldn't know. Like, little kids wouldn't know. But kids are horrible, okay? Kids are horrible to each other, especially little girls. Little girls are the worst, okay? Boys will just be physically aggressive with each other. But little girls are psychologically horrible to other little girls. So I can kind of understand this point where little girls or just little kids in general be like, you have two dads? It's kind of weird based. But also, true, it is kind of weird. It's not normal. 
It's not normal because if everyone had two dads, it would be normal. And the large majority, the extreme majority of people have one mother and one father, or at least come from one mother and father. I mean, she, she doesn't, she's in that unique situation where she just kind of, she was, she was taken. So it's sad. Business to say that. No one else's business. Absolutely not. And this is my biggest fear for my two daughters. For me, I feel like I have to prepare them as much as humanly possible for that outside world. Yes, that's what you do with kids in general. You prepare them for the outside world and you tell them that the outside world is very, very dark. The outside world is dark. The outside world sucks. Real life sucks. It's not all rainbows and kittens, everybody out there. You hear that, Grateful Citizens? It's not all rainbows and cuttlefish and penguins. Okay, real life? Real life is real life for a very real reason, okay? And I'm not saying that, you know, people should just go around saying, hey, you have two dads, that's, that's kind of weird and awful, and you're awful. We're not saying that. It's not the kid's fault. That's what I wanted to scream. I was like, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Hey, it's not your fault. I want you to know it's not your fault, okay? But we didn't get the opportunity to. That can tell you that you're wrong or that your family is wrong. Because that's one of my biggest fears. I wouldn't. I don't think anybody said wrong, but a lot of people. I, say I it's grew wrong. up in a less than ideal family. A less than ideal, I think, is where as but humans, there was right? Less ideal about her shit that's situation. I mean. no, this is what she's hearing, though. This is what she that's is perceiving. I mean, there is something less than ideal. I don't have to say it, but there is. I mean, that she's well, hearing. Well, I'm you know? hearing it too. I'm hearing yeah, invalidation too. of her family, of the structure. She's got a two-parent household. Right now, most hetero, most heterosexual families end up in divorce. No, we don't. don't. Also, every single we screwed don't. up person I know has a mom and a dad. I'd be careful to throw stones if you live in a glass house by calling other people screwed up. Let's be a little bit more self-aware. Let's read the room here. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Not malicious. We don't end up Every divorced. single screwed up Valid. person has Valid. a mom and a dad. Absolutely. I mean, that's literally true. That is literally true. Even in her case. Every screwed up person has a mom and a dad. Inevitably. It's just, it's just the way human reproduction works. You need a mom and a dad. You need a guy and a girl. You need a sperm and an egg. Should be a cool little song. But every, it's just, like, yeah. Yes. Nobody royally screwed up with two moms and two dads. This girl's got some trauma. This girl's got some trauma. I feel bad for her. I, I empathize. But for her to say that she's just a perfect person in a perfect mental state, uh, I feel for her. I empathize. But that's clearly not the case as evidence as what's happening in this video. That's that. And honestly, most gay kids' parents are straight. We come from we come from y'all. Well, they parents. all have to. <laughs> Based well, biologically. Biologically, <laughs> yes, they all have to. That's what I just said. <laughs> they all not necessarily no, not not the adoption Unless you're kids. Having... Not the adoption kids. Where do you think where do you think kids come from? Where do you think kids come from? Where do they come from? Came are you guys like i know a bunch of you guys watch this on your own because i got a lot of dms and i got a lot of messages from friends and like i could only make it 10 minutes in i, I couldn't i couldn't do it i don't i don't blame you from a straight relationship but our parents are heterosexual no i'm i'm biologically related to one of my dads my brother is biologically related to the other and they had us via egg donation and surrogacy so there's still a biological connection in my house but not where's your mom but but the mom but the mom's not there. The mom, the woman who carried her, not there. And, and I'm glad I have that connection, but I also have one of my dads who has straight parents was adopted. And it like, you know- Okay, I mean, so I, what? All right, let's, let's get back into this. Let's get mean into the other anything. thing. And I, I wish people- And he's 14 years old and it was a conversation. And I didn't- Oh, is she's gonna say how she caught her son watching porn. Empowering them to do their own research. They can get into the very wrong sides of doing that research, for instance, most people I know got their sex ed from porn. And if we're talking about Not good. You know, sex and consent, I, I don't think anyone in this room is thinking that porn is a great example yeah. of sex ed. It's not. Um, my but. son definitely, I definitely caught my son watching porn and he's 14 years old and it was a conversation. And I didn't shame him. 
you know, but, but if this is already happening, what do I look like coming at him and reprimanding him and telling him this is a boundary or we don't do this in this house. You said you would sound like a mother. You're going to go to all this action. It's like, no, this is already happening. So if now I'm just now finding out about it. So now there's a communication like, and we actually had a whole on conversation. As you should. Why this isn't real and why this is not okay for you. You're going to be an adult the rest of your life, honey. Be a 14 year old. Commendable, commendable. But a lot of people are in the comments were like, oh my God, slay queen. Thank you for like not shaming your son for watching porn. Like, okay, your, your, your son is literally uh, uh, taking sport in the degradation of women and human trafficking and child trafficking and sex trafficking and all that stuff like that, but you don't want to reprimand him? Like, come on, I'd understand if you did, but you did have a long talk to him with about it, and you did tell him why it's wrong. Right now, and he's like, you're right, mom. Eh, don't worry about it again. You're probably still sneaking and watching. You should worry about but, it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be able to stop that. I'm going to be able to communicate with him and do the best I can do. That's all we can do as See, parents. but that's good because you... You told him about this stuff before it got worse. So I have a son and a daughter. My son is almost seven. My daughter's four. This it, this wasn't and, important. Know, I don't it wasn't like important. She's like, I say vaginas, I say peepees. Okay, cool. Um, boys being gross in class. I didn't know how anything worked. Yeah, I only hung back because I, I, I agree and I disagree. Like for me, it was very, it was very interesting. Uh, I have mom and dad. Uh, my mother is a, a very, uh, she's a very Latina, Latina woman. Uh, so it's kind of funny that she was the one who I talked to about sex more than my dad. I don't think I've ever said more than two words to my dad up until this day about Still sex. true. So for my daughter, I almost kind of want to mirror that for obvious reasons. I mean, that might just be a better conversation for her mom to have with her. I mean, I'm willing to have a conversation, but I also feel a little bit uncomfortable at the same time. Maybe that has to do with my past. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I think the younger people here have it so incredibly difficult and so incredibly easy just because they have everything available to them at the same time. Where like me, you, like you over there, like you have to figure stuff out from like, you know, blurry VHS tapes or like slow, <laughs> slow internet downloads and stuff like that. So it's very like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not jealous of you guys at all. That's um, fair. That's yeah. fair to say that I might not feel comfortable talking to my daughter about intercourse. Very fair. Very fair. And th th see, this, this, this is actually parts of the show where they succeed, where the producers actually succeed in finding a middle ground. It's a perfect example of it. That's completely. It was yeah. way easier for me to talk to my son about how bitches are. Like, look, you're good at basketball. You know what I'm saying? Or you're good at af af I mean, no, did you have to degrade the women? Athletics and, and whatnot. Like, I know how women are going to degrade, degrade. Did you have to degrade the women? To when it comes to courting, court. yeah. Like, I could, I could talk to her probably a lot easier. Than Absolutely. I could about I Which is true. I could definitely talk to my daughter about dating. I could talk to her about how she's supposed to be treated, what she expects uh, from dating men uh, not, and even teenage boys at the same time, which, I mean, my daughter's not going to go on a date before she's 18. 100%. Um, I'll even buy her a freaking chastity belt if I have to, okay? With the key and all of it. Um, but yeah. I said disagree because of the word necessary. I don't think that it's necessary. Um, you know, everyone's watched Animal Planet. Nobody teaches the, the, lion, the lion cubs how to have sex or what, what to we do. We keep on going back I to the animals it's ingrained here. in all of us. Um, I think it's just something that is the result of evolutionary biology. My dad was a very strong masculine figure in my life and he was always there for me. But I never had the birds and the bees talk. I just, I never had it. I went through puberty. I felt all the things that young boys feel going through puberty. And, and this, this is, this is weird. I think, I think what you, what you do see in a lot of like Leave It to Beaver type shows of the late fifties and sixties is where the father will have a very rudimentary discussion with the son about, you know, how that all happens. But I think, I think especially boys and their mothers, they tend to have that discussion more because, like I said, a mother and a father are different and have different uh, abilities and characteristics where they're able to, um, I guess, uh, explain things a little bit better than, than the other. Um, and I think because moms nurture better, they're able to explain it in a way where it's not, uh, it's not so basic, but it's also informative, if that makes any sense. I don't know. That, that, that's, again, from my own subject, subjective um, personal lived experience. I use my eyes. And Let's I go to the next the question. Children should strive to meet their parents' expectation. Should strive to meet their parents' expectations. Why are they reading through this like we're three-year-olds? Why, why? Like, just say the sentence. Yeah. 
All everybody stepped forward except for the two Gen Z queers. Well, that's a valid question. What are those expectations? Do we do we do we expect our kids to be rocket scientists as soon as they're born? Probably not. If it's like good upstanding citizens who love and respect their family and their friends, I think so. And I'm sure there there are some children of immigrants here who probably have a very high standard expected of them from the day that they were born or the day that they moved to this country. And that's one thing. Based answer, Alex agrees with me. Or Alice does agree with me. We can go on to the next one. And this was this was a good one too. Schools should teach students. Why do they? Why did? Why do they read that? Like I understand they want us to um, to understand the question, but elementary schools should teach students about sexual orientation and gender identity. About sexual orientation and gender identity. I could have asked the question four seconds, and I would have understood it. Unbased. I don't think they should teach like queer theory or like <laughs> college level yeah. gender classes, but. I mean, you said it. Just stop it right there. Don't know no buts. I think they should be taught that these kinds of people exist in the world and you will grow up in a world with where you need to love and respect these people. Here's the thing you need to love and respect everybody. You need to love everybody. Do you need to respect everybody? No. I don't respect your maybe sexually deviant activities. I really don't. I don't have to respect it. I can love you. I can love you as a child of God. I can uh, I, I, I can pray for you, and I can I can hope that you repent of your sins and um, join me over here. Um, but I don't have to respect that. Like what it was, uh, I beat my wife every day. I respect that. I respect that, and I love you. Okay, and I see it as the same. And I know a lot of people are going to come back and say, well, Mike, you know, being in love with somebody else is a lot different than beating your wife. Not in the eyes of God. Yeah, for me, that like if, if we're talking specifically elementary school, for me, that just looks like having a book in the classroom that is about a two dad family or is about someone um, discovering. Uh, of course like it is. Representation. The, representation. With representation. Oh, no. Boundary from everybody's boundaries are a little bit different, right? As parents. Absolutely. So I don't think the schools understand that. And I don't think government schools. I was kind of fed up. Like if you can see me kind of over here, I was kind of fed up at this point just because, just because I like after the first time I watched this video, I'm like, oh wow, they did a lot of editing. And now I'm kind of like, they're not letting us speak for a little bit longer. They're not at, allowing us follow-ups. And I, at this point I was fed up. Really should be raising our children, which they are now, right? You know, we should be raising, really raising our own children. And if we have to put our children in a public school, hopefully they're learning reading, writing, and arithmetic, and the social things, and the cultural things, and the religious things that we're, that are valuable to each one of us. Hope not, but the, do you see, it's it just, I can get so, I can get out Sorry, of we're skipping ahead I'm here. like, okay, you're teaching them to, okay, no, no absolutely not. No. That, but I mean, for a 50-year-old woman to have a thousand rainbows in the classroom when I Austin was just talking about the abundance of rainbows in classrooms nowadays kind of trigger him. And I, I mean, I understand that, but uh, a lot of people are like, dude, this dude hates rainbows. I grew up and there was maybe one or two or three. What's two moms? That's perfectly fine. We're doing another thing about which we want sensible. Sorry, I'm skipping ahead, but I know I, this may uh, bother you guys, but I'm trying to find it's indoctrination on the I have to also agree that your, your classroom to talk about this anatomy or this anatomy. It's just not your job. When it comes to pronouns, I feel like that teacher is creating a safe space for that child in case they do come home and they cannot come That's out That's what to it you comes guys. down to. It's, it's creating safe spaces for the children that aren't like Like, I, I didn't mean to point you guys Honestly. out, no, but you but both but are very religious. Right. And I personally come from a very religious household. No offense, but I am uncomfortable as hell, you know, being... Around Christians. Not necessarily Christians, but people Catholics. that... We can be pretty tough. <laughs> no, I don't mean to like make no, you guys no, feel uncomfortable. I understand comfortable. what you're saying because it, it's it's a two sided coin. Absolutely. You know, it, it's like. Well, it's a convenience like, to be Christian. It's I'm going to be right. I'm going to be Christian of, of the old covenant and not right. know what Christianity really means on the new covenant. And I know Christianity well, because I, I went to a ministerial school for three years. So you want to talk about the Bible? We can talk about it. But LGBT is not even talked about in the new covenant. Which is you want to know why? Do you want to know why LGBTQ was not talked about in the Bible in the New Testament? People in the Roman Empire did not speak English. They also didn't live in the, what is it, 21st century where LGBTQ was a thing. Now, I did a video a couple of videos ago, a couple of reacts ago, where a gay pastor said the word homosexual wasn't even said in the Bible. 
Yeah. So? And I'll say it again. Just because the phrase LGBTQ or lesbian or homosexual or gay was not in the Bible does not mean that Christ was neutral to sexually deviant behavior. In Matthew, he's very explicit where he says any sexual activity outside of a marriage between a man and a woman is sinful. So for someone who's, who's been in a, you know, a pastoral program for three years to just kind of gloss over that fact, it is so anti-biblical. Listen, I am not a biblical scholar, but I at least have the intellectual fortitude and the intellectual honesty to say, hey, listen, Jesus wouldn't be neutral to what you're doing. Jesus wouldn't condone what you're doing because as he said in Matthew chapter 19, verse 13, maybe, he finds that sexual behavior outside of a mar- of a married of a marriage, basically any sort of situation that involves marriage, any sort of situation that is outside of a man and a woman who are married to each other is sinful and deviant and gross. I, I don't know what else to say about that. But um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I kind of, I'm, I'm biting my tongue. Obviously, this was what? This was filmed uh, about a, uh, two months ago. So I've been doing more reading. I've been doing more studying since then. So if I was as learned as I am now, I would have said something back then for sure. Jesus Christ came and washed away my sins and I'm a Christian. Pause, because we do have to move on. I want to hear from Mike. At this point, she wanted to hear from me because I wasn't getting involved right away. And I was just kind of sitting, sitting back and I really didn't feel like... Uh, participating really anymore, if that makes any sense. Also, uh, this is this is another point where I say something that gets horribly, horribly misinterpreted in the comments. So I'll, 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 I'll say what I said, and then I'll give you guys proper context. Oh, well, no, I was just going to say that, that, you know, my wife and I plan to homeschool for a multitude of reasons. Based. Specifically, we don't want the state involved in our child's education. Based. There are a bunch of subjects we don't even think should be taught to begin with. Though I do sound kind of like some like, you know, libertarian. I don't want the state involved. No, I, well, currently as it is now, I definitely don't want the state involved. Why we decided this was because we went to our local school districts. Let me, hold on, let me get back to what I said. We don't even think should be taught to begin with, like earth science, what the hell is that all about? Earth science, what the hell is that all about? People went nuts in the comments, like this guy doesn't even believe in earth science. Like what is he gonna do when, how's his kid gonna feel when he, when there's an earthquake or something in Tennessee? Like there's fucking earthquakes in Tennessee. This, this was the context of the point that was missed, okay? I don't want Miss Lisa, who's some, you know, 55-year-old woman living paycheck to paycheck, teaching at a public school, who teaches 20 other kids for other subjects to try and impart any sort of expertise in earth science, when we know she doesn't have a background in earth science, she doesn't have a degree in earth science, she probably has just some either bachelor's or maybe some low master's degree in education, primary school education or whatever like that. So what I'm saying is, I would rather my child be taught earth science by earth scientists. And what happens in a lot of homeschooling curriculum is the curriculum is actually made up or at least guided by people in the appropriate fields earth science, physics, chemistry, or whatever. There are tons of homeschooling programs that come with curriculum who are crafted by those people and who also um, have, um, I guess you can say, assets that can be used where the kids can go out and do uh, hands-on activities or they can meet in these sort of uh, social centers and learn from a person who does have a background in that. And also, here's, here's the thing. Why are we inundating Uh, fifth graders with six different subjects starting from 7 a.m. until 3 p.m., sending them home with at least two to three hours of homework and then expecting them to be model students or interested in anything. That's the whole point. I wish I could have said that, but I was cut off or interrupted or I knew I didn't have the time. So that's what I'm saying when I'm saying like, why are we teaching fifth graders earth science? Like, it's dumb. Teach kids reading and arithmetic up until let's say the seventh grade at the at, at, at the earliest, I guess, and then allow the kids to kind of develop and get curious in things. I mean, of course, yeah, kids can get interested in earth science, but is like really Miss Lisa, the woman who just regurgitates a curriculum who has no expertise in it, really going to ignite that fire in my child when it comes to earth science? No, probably not. So if anyone had any sort of confusion about why I said that, that's why I said it. Um, but to point to Aldo's point, one of the reasons why, especially recently, why we, why we decided this was because we went to our local school district's library and those books absolutely exist. And we were told by the librarian that an eight to 12 year old 
can take those books out without their parents' permission. And these books, they're kind of like comic booky types. Some of them are, but some of them have extremely pornographic uh, descriptions. Some of them have visual aids. Some of them are talking about, hey, try a blowjob, see how it makes you feel. Some of them talk about fingering yourself. I'm absolutely not open to having my daughter look at that stuff, let alone even hear about it from other kids. Um, and second of all, with the teachers in the classrooms, I feel like there is a larger subset of teachers who seem to have an agenda. This is just what I see. Just look at TikTok with. and Instagram. Um, and it's just not something that I'm comfortable with. So. And for people saying, well, books like that don't exist. Let us read something from the book uh, called, uh, this was the book that Alice was referencing when she were talking about, uh, she, you know, try your vaginal fluid if you go back in the video and listen to it. It's a book called Gender Queer, a Memoir by Maya Kobabi. And the part where she talks about uh, eating your own freaking vaginal fluid or something like that, um, Kobabe's older sister kind of dares ear to taste ear own vaginal fluids. Kobabe is asexual and finds this gross. We see this progress later as E grows up to honestly tell ear female dating partner that E won't go down on ear. The f this is the slippery slope we're talking about. Yeah, let's just teach people that, you know, these kind of people exist. Yeah, let's also teach, let's have a book. Let's have a book in the class with two dads. Now let's have a book in the class that's mandated by, you know, by the school district where uh, psychopaths are telling each other to uh, eat their own vaginal fluid like it's, you know, whatever, it's peanut butter. Who cares? I'm telling you guys, slippery slope is real. Don't fall for it. Um, and I think this is where... I, oh God, is that at, at the end of this question? That goes on in, in the school district. I absolutely believe that it starts at home. And if you give your kids a good foundation at home, she actually, should be able she to agreed with me about homeschooling your kids. They go to school and, and recognize these different things. Like, oh, I don't agree with that. I don't get jiggy with that. But I'm not going to hate and disrespect the person that does. So because there are kids that are committing suicide, there are kids that are coming to school that, that come to school for safety, for food, not only just to learn. Yeah, they shouldn't do that. They, they, they shouldn't do that. Parents should actually make the house a safe place. Like to, to, to rely on government to solve all your problems is this like weird sort of cope. Like, oh yeah, let the government schools take care of these kids. No, 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 no. If the government was competent, like it should be, if the government had people who led it correctly, if the government had moral leaders, then yeah, of course. It's like I, I wouldn't have problems sending my kids to these public schools, but instead they don't. Instead they, ha they, they, they have literal Satanists running it. So Learn about sex ed, but literally because they have no other place to go but to go to school for food in the morning. What about the kid though who's made to feel out to be like a pariah? Let's say if there's one kid who's like, well, you know, that's maybe not what I believe with the pronouns or with any sort of I'm not uh, kid. I don't care right, about right, pronouns. Right. Absolutely. Right, exactly. Sure. So yeah. now today, I feel like there are kids who are probably going to be pariahed by their teacher. Maybe if they're, you know, if he or she's a bad grammatically kid, slipped know. up. That's not necessarily inclusive or maybe a safe space for that one child who, you know, may feel like I don't believe in any of this stuff. It's not just about making the kids in the school feel safe. It's about educating the people that don't know how to treat other people outside of the school so they can take that with them and respect people that are <laughs> oh, I can't stand not her. inside the school okay so the next question is sometimes a child needs a spanking oh sometimes a child needs a spanking what hmm, I struggle with this because I don't oh yeah okay it was after this thing and <laughs> this is this is absolutely hilarious because up until this point I have never spanked my child about two weeks ago, I did it for the first time. So it's just kind of, it's just kind of full thing. Even my mom, wa my mom watched this and she was like, oh, how the tables have turned tables. It's kind of funny. This is interesting because, ooh, let me get close. I feel that every kid needs a spanking. Though. True. Every kid at some point needs a spanking. And the people in the comments were like, I can't believe you said that. Every kid needs a spanking. You need a spanking right now. Go get your spank. Go get your spanking. So my wife and I have decided that we're not going to spank our kids. If that makes any sense, like guys. I dreamland, it's a dreamland, guys. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, it's a dreamland. I, I I appreciate the effort. I held out for as long as I could, but when my daughter started knocking down uh, dining room chairs, I uh, I did it. I did it. And let me tell you what, I cried afterwards. Yeah, it, it's 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 something that, especially with a little girl, it kills you. It kills you. But um, yeah, spanking is necessary. Okay, and like I said here, <laughs> I grew up being spanked. And I turned out all right for it, but... The comments were like, oh, you turned out okay? Yeah, I don't think so. Sh shut up. I, I do think that spanking can be, or, you know, physical... What's the word? Correction. Physical discipline or physical correction? People yeah, are like, it abuse, useful, it's but, abuse. Uh, yeah, not for mine. Here's the thing. Abuse. Have you ever yelled at your child? 
Why are you emotionally abusing your child? Physical abuse, emotional abuse. Two sides of the same coin. Don't tell me I'm an animal for like spanking my child on the rear end at like 10%, okay? The thing is, like, you can take this question both ways. There are cases where you should not spank a child. Yeah. But I think about behaviors that are, have been ingrained, that have been enabled for a long time, that are terrible, and they should stop. So I used to work at a tech summer camp, and there was this little girl who's just a demon. She would, like, go up to the Indian kids, say, you're ugly, you're brown, you smell. Like, these are things that are enabled. A kid isn't born and Total has chat. this hate towards Indian people, you know what I mean? So I think a case like that, and then when the mom came, she was just like, honey, you can't continue doing that. It's been enabled for, like, mild cases like you got to be on a test or something like that right. so. well, and what do we do we mirror our parents behavior so because i grew up with you know my mom spanked me and my dad rarely did but if you ever like if he ever got to the point of a spanking it happened but i think that my first inclination when my daughter would have a tantrum would just almost kind of be like to either grab her really hard or to just think about you know this can lead to spanking and i used to tell my wife i used to be like just just let me do it let me see what happens people were like look he wants to hit his child so bad so bad yeah yeah, I did. I really did. And then I would stop myself and be like, okay, she doesn't need this until she actually did need it. And for for all intents and purposes, okay, I would assume that the large majority of the average Jubilee commenter is like a 15-year-old non-binary kid. Okay, so until you have kid, kids or kiddos, my friend, shut up. But it just kind of restrained ourselves. And we just said, you know, we decided at first and it may, may seem like a very like unconservative thing to say, but like, yeah, we came to the decision we're not going to do that. Did that. I did it. I freaking did it. So for me, um, you know, being African-American. You re like gave a really long answer, and Aldo had something interesting to say. The backhand with we the got, that, we got the wood to be able to, if you look at the animal kingdom, if you look at the animal kingdom, I'll talk about that again. Please stop. But they physically Let's correct not talk about the animal kingdom. their young ones when. There being a laughter that follows crime. Let's go back. The first thing that bugs me about this conversation that it always seems to be, oh, ha, 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 yeah, I got the smack and ah, ha, ha. And it yeah, we did, because we don't hold on to our trauma like you do. Got spanked and moved on. Don't hold it internally. I, uh, my dad spanked me the one time, and I, I just can't let it go. It's been something that's been ruining our life. Be like, Dad, you spanked me. I was a little asshole. Good on you for doing that. Thank you. I turned out well. I learned my lesson. Thank you, Dad. Always ends up being... A laughter that follows what stories of people getting spanked. Um, I was spanked. Uh, I w had my mouth washed out with soap. Uh, I had my pants literally pulled down around my ankles and spanked in front of my in front of my friends. Yeah. So As a child, first of all, that embarrassment it was hard to come back from. Very very hard. Not only that, but my relationship with my father completely suffered because so soft i resented him i hated him i feared him and it was a long like i'm still trying to repair it from this day and i think that as a parent now that i'm in that position who seems like who seems like the more kind of level-headed rational side who seems like the people that don't have all this internalized trauma within them okay is it the people who spank their kids and who were spanked? Or is it the people who now don't spank their kids because they see it as abuse and hold all this internal trauma? Who seems like the more rational side here? And my child acts up. Yeah, of course, we, we have to discipline them. But sending them to timeout, which they hate and despise, and then having that... Con timeout. I'm, timeout. I remember I asked my mom about timeout. She laughed in my face. My mother laughed in my face at timeout. Timeout. She's like, that's white people. White people do that. Conversation of why did you go to timeout? And they understand and they repeat what they're not supposed to do. You know, it works and they don't do it again. And I think we can get the point across and discipline our children without. Okay. Abuse, okay. Without okay. Hitting, okay. Without... We have a bigger problem. Yeah. First, you got to hear what this, what this, uh, <laughs> what this girl said. The first time I ever did get physically spanked was by my grandpa's wife. I lived with her and blah, blah, blah. And she, she smacked me and I smacked her back. Imagine that being the example for your kids. Your grandma, your great grandma, she smacked me once. So I hit it back because. You know, like I wasn't going to take that. I don't take that kind of disrespect. I don't take that kind of disrespect. Okay. Like imagine the example of that. Like 
that's some, that's like the, the the way like her 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 intonation is like such a like a white trash thing to say like I ain't taking no shit okay so I smack my grandmother back and like I don't touch my kids like that I don't feel like my little four year old daughter why does she need to be spanked she's four because they're demons sometimes they can be demons and they need they need the correction they need the correction trust me it's gonna happen at some point because if if, if you don't physically uh, discipline or reprimand your child, you do it by, I'm sure, total emotional manipulation and with emo emotional abuse, okay? There, there is no parent on the planet who has been, who has remained totally calm through any tantrum. There just, there just cannot be. There cannot be. If they are, they're in communion with God because, you know, he, he or she is a saint. Six-year-old, he's still learning the world around him. He doesn't need that. That's yeah, he needs a spanking. of people to see. And I don't see the... Point. So, you know, in the dis you were saying, um, after spanking her, I, I don't even remember last time in the dis and I hope this makes sense. Getting up or doing something or screaming or going crazy, and I'm like, hey guys, stop. And they're still going, I'll get the belt and I'll just jingle. Okay, dad, we're sitting down. And I'm like, oh, so you, you guys are good? Yeah, dad, we're good. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't have to. It's a response to stimuli. It's a, it's a res they're absolutely like, oh shit, we don't want to get hit. We don't so want to get hit, but up. also it's a respect thing. Like, that's my father. He's in there, you know, trying to work on the computer or something. We are screaming too loud. It's the job of the parent to make sure the child can come to them for anything and everything. And Her or him. Job of the parent to come to the parent. Singular person. I messed up a couple times. I, I I give myself that, but you know I'm gonna correct it when I see it. Overall love. Why would you teach a child that that person would hit them? That's it. That's it. <laughs> I wanted to I, I I wanted to respond, and I I th this is where it happened. I told the producer. I said, "Can I respond to this?" She said, "No." And I was like, "That's not fair." Can we? And I said, "Can we get some kind of like." countdown clock or like a signal from you guys when it's time to move on so that we don't have a thought or so that we don't want to jump in and get cut off and the producer's like no don't tell me how to do my job and i said excuse me and she's like no you don't run this and i was like i clearly don't i'm just asking you if we can get a little bit of a heads up as to when the topic will be shut down and she was like no reset and i said fine i'm done so that's when you see at the next question i don't say anything even though i step forward and agree i don't say anything she has to ask me and all i do is i say yeah i agree with everybody i, I was over it at this point here, I'll get to it. Because the next question is the sexuality of parents influences their kids' sexuality. And I'll just step forward because the, the usual suspects step forward. Identify as LGBTQ double toxic. If a child sees sexuality and sees it as toxic, they may just choose to go the other way. And see, they edited that part out. I knew they edited that part out because they said, uh, we haven't heard from Mike. What would you like to say? And I, I, all I did was say, I didn't look at the producer in the face. I was like, I agree with everybody. I said it just like that. Yep, I agree with everybody. And my thinking, if you're not going to allow me to talk or if you're not going to allow me to, a little bit of time to push back on something that someone else said, then I, what, what am I here for? A lot of gay people have straight parents. A lot of gay parents produce straight kids. <sighs> so, debunked. Debunked! She said it from the mouth, from the mouth of God. She has said it. She's she she's she's made the, the the best truth truth claim of the whole show, the whole episode. Debunked. What did she say? What did she say? Only gay kids come from what? A lot of gay people have straight parents. No, 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 no. no. Only gay people can only have straight parents, and I don't mean like I don't mean parents. I'm, like straight or gay people can only come. They can only come, not have. They can only come from straight people. I'm not talking about in vitro fertilization. I'm not talking about surrogacy. That's disorder. That doesn't count. But the way people make babies, it has to come from straight people. I mean, I guess you can have like undercover gays who are like really just, they're undercover gays and they want families and stuff like that. And they know that the only way to have a biological kid um, is to do that and not sodomy. So I guess they do it that way. But no, I mean, like, what is this? A lot of gay parents produce straight kids. A lot of gay parents produce... Oh, this was it. This was it too. She said a lot of gay parents produce straight kids, to which, after she was done saying that, I retorted, gay parents cannot produce kids. They took that out. So, debunked. You, you <laughs> cannot... If you're straight, that doesn't mean your child is straight. If you're gay, that doesn't mean your child is gay. I want to... That's where the edit was. That's where the edit was. 
because she wasn't continuing the, the thought. You can hear it. So here, here's the cut. So debunked. Right. <laughs> you cannot. This is, this is before the edit. That doesn't mean your child is straight. If you're gay, that doesn't mean your child is gay. Boom. I want to say that's the edit because I said, I said, gay parents cannot produce kids. And then the gay dad said, well, I have kids. And I was like, you didn't produce those kids, dude. That's what I said. And they cut that out specifically. I know I'm not wrong. I'm, I, if, the, if the Jubilee producers are watching this, I'm sure they can find that footage and release it. If not, I'll bite my tongue. Firm on the fact that sexuality is biological. Um, it's not something you can choose. And if it's something you want to explore. Sexuality is biological. It's not something that you can choose. But it's something that you can explore. That's different from choosing. Oh, is it? Um, exploring is, oh, maybe I'll go see what it's like being with a woman. Oh, that didn't feel right. So I'm going to now choose to go the other way and see how that feels. It's all a choice. It's all, don't give me this born this way stuff. It's all a choice. You just admitted it. You just tried to dress it up as, as because you didn't want to be outed by your own community. Please, please. It's, you just said it. You just said it's a choice. Because it's biological. Yeah. So two points, one of which is something that you had said about <clears throat> them only knowing the gay that there's two come up to me. Yeah, so I society. Oh yeah, this was a weird thing. Looking at me, judging me when I'm out to dinner with my two girls and people come up and go, you're doing such a good job. You don't do that to straight parents who are out with their kids. Happens all the time. I remember being out with my parents. There were three little redheads. There were three of us. And people would compliment us all the time. Oh, they behave so well. Oh, you guys are doing such a great job. Even with me and, Alan Car me, and Car me and Carly, me and my wife, when we're out, I mean, obviously, like, people come, oh, she's so cute. She's so precious. Oh, thank you very much. Sometimes she throw tantrums at the house. It's kind of crazy. But, you know, like, people come up. They, they come up to you and they say stuff, especially when she's, you know, behaving really well. Like, to say that, like, nobody goes up to straight people. And I say, yeah, they do. It's like, why come up to me? Yeah, so I would not have chosen to be gay if I had the choice. I am gay. I am happy. My life is amazing. Cope, 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 uh, the way I was parented made me feel seen and safe. Everybody in the comments was like, oh my God, when Elizabeth ran up, that was totally me. And I totally felt that. The way I was parented made me feel safe and seen. It's so cringe. Her dad's right there. Imagine if she didn't do that. My parents already knew that they were getting into parenting um, miles behind other people because the world tells them they're going to be this kind of parent simply because they're gay. From what they've told me before I was born, before my brother was born, it was... We were just going to prepare, you know, to, to, to strip you from the womb of your mother for our own, you know, narcissistic feeling of having a family uh, in a very unnatural way. Doing all kinds of research on what works for kids, um, how to raise a girl. Um, have a mom. Having a mom helps raise a girl. What girl puberty is like. Having a mom would help there too. All of these things, they made sure that they were super educated so that the only reason the world could tell them they were a bad parent is because they were gay. And that means nothing. Um, that comes down to your own opinion. And so I grew up- Which is, which is what we were all expressing, our own opinions. So safe, so supported. I came to my parents with any question and they always had the answer. Um, and I always knew I could grow up being whatever I want. Blah, blah, blah. Let's get to me. This show's about me. This specific react my dad's is about probably me. Probably one of the most soft-spoken individuals I've ever met in my entire life. But I remember instances of feeling safe because I would see him literally snap to dad protection mode when it came to you know anyone trying to harm us or my mother or anything like that. And as far as the there was this one time in Barcelona where my dad, we were all on the subway together on the train. Uh, you know, moving around and doing some sightseeing and stuff. And I remember someone tried to steal his wallet, and I, I think it was about like. 13, 14 at the time, somewhere between 12 and 15. I remember watching my dad yoke this dude up around the freaking neck and pushing him up against the, 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 you know, the wall of the subway card and having the guy give him back his wallet. I remember that. And that's what a father is. He's the protector, okay? You don't mess with the protector of the family, okay? You don't do it. Being seen, my parents, they, like all of our parents, they had the expectations we talked about, about us being successful in our career. But I had so many wants and desires from being a teenager, like wanting to be, oh, I want to be a magician. I want to be a skateboarder. True, I did. Who was buying me magician kits? Who was buying me skateboards? Like 
my parents don't know what being trans is. They don't really understand what being gay was. This was very interesting. Them, they were like, we don't really know what this is, but we love you. And that's what made me feel safe. Even if they don't particularly. That's, that's, that's all nice. But I might've um, skipped the part where uh, Alexa had said that he didn't know what a girl was until he was 15 years old. And I don't know why no one brought it up, but I kind of wanted to be like, you have, you had a mom. I'm sure you knew what a girl was, right? Like, you know what a girl is. I regret not, not asking that because I'm sure she knows what a girl is. But anyway, that was kind of it. Out of any. That, that, that's kind of it and, and, and how it went. There's really no need to watch it just because that's the kind of the, the end of the video. But those are the two things I wanted to clear up. Stats, studies. Uh, data it doesn't mean anything to me when I'm having a conversation with you and trying to get you get to know you as a person. Stats, I don't care about stats. Uh, stats are gay. Um, also, earth science, I don't need it taught to me by someone who's not qualified, okay? That may be, oh, that's an argument from authority. Yeah, because I'm learning something. Why would I, if I'm gonna take an elective at a college and it's earth science, why would I not want it to be taught by someone who has a degree or has studied in the area of earth science? Like that doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, that's, well, you're going to homeschool your daughter. What does your wife know about freaking earth science? Again, the curriculum is set up by a scientist and they also set up activities and they also are uh, have ways where you can uh, digitally interact with the kids and, and teach them about the subject from a person who is well studied in the subject. That's all I wanted to say. Those two points about that. Um, thank you guys for watching. This has been the longest React video. Uh, I really had fun doing this, but I am going to go home now and I'm going to take my daughter to the playground.